Hello, what's up guys? What we are watching right now is a legacy DOH video entitled Prevent the Bite, Prevent Malaria. This video was actually funded by two government agencies, the DOH and the DEPED. Interestingly enough, this video did not have a widespread distribution. The first time I saw this video, I was already practicing as a rural health physician at Olongapo in 2011. What you see here is the old district hospital of Kapalong, Davao del Norte. The language originally spoken in this video was Cebuano, a major Philippine dialect. Shown here is a doctor making his daily rounds. At the background, you can see how a generic district hospital looks like. I've served in a district hospital like this in Orani, Bataan. Presumably, this doctor is visiting a recovering patient from malaria. He explains to the mother that his son was fortunate enough to have been brought to the hospital in time. He has just been cured of malaria. As I'm recording this vlog, it's July 12, 2020. We are in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic. At around the time this video was being shot, the epidemic here in the Philippines was malaria. If somebody has a fever today, the DOH is telling us to suspect COVID. In this video, the DOH is telling every healthcare worker watching fever is equals to malaria. From that, I can deduce that this was filmed no earlier than the 1998 Philippine malaria epidemic. In 1998, I was just a high school graduate then. I heard about the malaria epidemic and how it was ravaging southern Philippines. There, was, there were a lot of Filipinos dying, but most of them are in Mindanao. Davao del Norte, where this video was shot, is in Mindanao, so it's kind of self-explanatory why this video will come out from that area. By the way, in case you were just wondering, my name is Dr. Zero Melia and this is my vlog number 19. I originally posted this video on YouTube back in 2013. It's not that popular video because before COVID, malaria is on its way to being eliminated. However, interest in this disease may come up in the future, which is why I'm adamant to upload it back. In this scene, the doctor is trying to explain to the mother that the current beliefs about malaria are wrong. A lot of Filipinos, most of them poor with little or no education, are very much attached to their culture and are resistant to authority figures. This scene is very idealistic, but in practice, it requires art to convince people. For a doctor practicing this sacred profession among the poor, I know that each patient requires different approaches to explaining the pathophysiology of disease. It's hard to change beliefs, but it can be done. The DOH at that time used animation to explain that mosquitoes carry the parasites that causes malaria. The DOH required healthcare workers to teach this in Toto in all communities. While it helps somewhat, an average Filipino doesn't really need to know the specifics like a female Anopheles mosquito carries the parasitic species of Plasmodium that causes malaria and you die via hepatocyte damage. In my practice, simple is sweet. Mosquitoes transfer malaria from person to person. Most of the time, you can experience fever, chills, weakness, which are the same symptoms as other diseases transmitted by mosquitoes. However, in malaria, your liver gets damaged. If the damage is massive, you could die from malaria. It's that simple. To persuade people to do action, you then ask them questions about what they can do about your simple explanation. If mosquitoes transmit malaria from person to person, what can one person do? What can the community do? How can the municipal health office help? Can we involve our local government leaders in this mosquito problem? Asking the right questions invokes the community to do action. It's common knowledge nowadays, even among the poor, that mosquitoes thrive in stagnant waters. 
It's all thanks to info videos like these from the DOH and inclusion of the mosquito cycle in elementary science textbooks. So healthcare workers nowadays, again it's 2020, can skip to the part of prevention by destroying or avoiding breeding places of these mosquitoes, getting a repellent, installing mosquito nets, and wearing long sleeve shirts and comfortable long pants when you sleep. It's very hot in this tropical country, even during the evenings, Philippines. Here we see some animations and exposition as to how malaria will kill a person infected by it. It's nice to tell them about the pathocytes, but it's better received when they ask why a certain patient has the chills on certain parts of the day. This merozoids is an intermediate form of the parasite that comes out of the liver to infect the red blood cell. How is that important? When a parasite leaves the liver, there, there's usually fever or chills followed by jaundice depending on how much of the liver is involved. There is another set of chills or fever on the patient when the mature gametocytes ruptures the red blood cells and this is usually followed by paleness of the skin due to anemia. It's this gametocyte that gets sucked by the mosquito to be transferred to another host. Inside the mosquito, there is no change in the malaria's parasite life cycle, nor does the mosquito get sick. This is because malaria is a human parasite. Its entire life cycle is dependent on the human host. The last patient I handled that had malaria was a Korean national with a chief complaint of a headache. He rapidly developed seizures and meningeal irritation. That was back in 2011, of course, I referred the patient to a specialist. Among the tests she ordered was a malarial blood smear. It was a tricky procedure that required the patient to be febrile. The test was positive for P. falciparum malaria, the most deadly and common species. It affected the patient's brain and he later succumbed to the disease. He got the malaria while working in the Hanjin shipyard in Subic Sambales. He was among the last known patients in the area and nine years later today, Subic is next in line to have a malaria elimination hub. Malaria, a public health emergency of international concern, just like COVID-19 is today, can be eliminated. Lessons learned from the Zambales part of the epidemic involves the use of two very important public health strategies community action, and political will. The widespread availability of rapid diagnostic tests can only be achieved through political will. Compliance and medications are achieved if the community is knowledgeable about them. Also, if the community is empowered to do action on their part, prevention becomes easy. During epidemics, the public health system is called for to do radical measures to ensure a decrease in transmission of disease. In the last malarial epidemic, insecticide-treated bed nets played a major role in rural areas or in poor communities. Insects, skin repellents were recommended as an everyday preventive measure. Fogging and misting of insecticides were also done but were not shown here. Now these are chemicals that harm a human being but is called for because of the greater good. Other measures involve destroying breeding sites and preventing animals to live in close proximity because they attract the vectors of disease. If the community can decrease the population of the vectors in their area, the risk of getting and the spread of the disease is minimized. The Anopheles mosquito is more often found in forests and foliage, so you see why the video is geared toward the rural and not in the urban areas. Because of these recommendations then by the DOH, rural areas today still practice burning of leaves at key areas in proximity of the house. It was meant to keep Anopheles mosquitoes away. The public health measures you see here resulted in the drastic drop of malaria in the Philippines. Good leadership played a role. Leadership has to be in all levels of the government. We don't need to rely on DOH or the president to just take the helm of responsibility. Even in the community level, 
everybody has to take that role of leadership and build integrity in the emergency response. Thank you very much guys for watching this video. I know this is an old video, but we can learn a lot from it. I originally uploaded this video on YouTube and now the unadulterated version is gone. I worked on translating it to English and giving it SEO power to reach a lot of people all over the world. It got close to 150k views in past 7 years. And today, while COVID is ravaging the known world, it pays to know how epidemics in the past were properly stopped. Today is July 12, 2020 and a vaccine for COVID is yet to be mass produced. However, a few countries are already successful in eradicating COVID inside their borders. Community action political will, and leadership. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. I have more videos coming your way, so click the subscribe button and ring that bell for notifications of the uploads. As always, this is Dr. Zero Melia, physician, firefighter, and writer. Take care, guys. God bless and peace out.